Good morning, good morning. It is your boy Jay Goble back at it again for Not Many Noble. Reading the Bible through in 22 with you. We are reading the World English Bible. Today is March 26th. March 26th. Uh, what day of the year is March 26th? That's typical. I think it was like 89th, 89, 85th. Oh, wow, I was way off. I was way off. 85th day of the year. And it is good hair day, which doesn't, I guess, I don't know if that applies to me. I shave my hair for the most part. I stay uh, trimmed, not not, uh, not shaved ball, but just with the clippers. It is purple day, national spinach day, make up your own holiday day. Make up your own holiday day. All right. Well, that's pretty good. We're in the World English Bible in the book of Joshua. We're reading the Bible through in chronological order. If this is your first time with us in that chronological order so far, took us from Genesis. We started in Genesis to Job, then Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And we've sprinkled certain verses from First Chronicles in there. That's what we've got. Now we are in the book of Joshua. Chapter 12, verse 7. Joshua and Israel are putting to death uh, kings and cities and every living thing inside them. Chapter 12, verse 7. These are the kings of the land whom Joshua and the children of Israel struck beyond the Jordan westward, from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon, even to Mount Halak that goes up to Sire. Joshua gave it to the tribes of Israel for a possession according to their divisions, in the hill country and in the lowland, and in the Arabah, and in the slopes, and in the wilderness, and in the south, the, Hiv- the Hittite, the Amorite, and the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. The king of Jericho won, the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, won, the king of Jerusalem won, the king of Hebron won, the king of Jarmuth won, the king of Lachish won, the king of Eglon won, the king of Gezer won, the king of Deber won, the king of Geder won, the king of Hormah won, the king of Arad won, the king of Libna won, the king of Adullam won, the king of Makeda won. The king of Bethel won. The king of Tapua won. The king of Hefer won. The king of Aphek won. The king of Alasheron won. The king of Madon won. The king of Hazor won. The king of Shimram Maron won. The king of Akshaf won. The king of Tanak won. The king of Megiddo won. The king of Kadesh won. The king of Jokneam and Carmel won. The king of Dor and the height of Dor won. The king of Goim and Gilgal won. The king of Tirza won. All the kings won. 31, Joshua 13. Now Joshua was old and advanced in years. Yahweh said to him, you are old and advanced in years, and there remains yet very much land to be possessed. So, I mean, we've kind of gone through a lot. This has not necessarily been quick. I mean, they've been hustling, but it's still taken them years This is the land that still remains, all the regions of the Philistines and all the Geshurites from the Shehor, which is before Egypt, even to the border of Akron northward, which is counted as Canaanite. The five lords of the Philistines, the Gazites and the Ashdodites, the Ashkelonites, the Gittites and the Ekronites, also the Avim on the south, all the land of the Canaanites and Mira that belongs to the Sidonians, to Aphek, to the borders of the Amorites, and the land of the Gebalites, and all Lebanon, toward the sunrise from Baal Gad, under Mount Hermon, to the entrance of Hamath, all the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon to Misrephoth, Maim, all of, even all the Sidonians, I will drive them out from before the children of Israel, just allocate it to Israel for an inheritance, as I have commanded you. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance to the nine tribes and the half-tribe of Manasseh. With him the Reubenites and the Gadites received their inheritance, which Moses gave them beyond the Jordan eastward, even as Moses, the servant of Yahweh, gave them. From Aroer, that is on the edge of the valley of Arnon, and the city that is in the middle of the valley, and all the plain of Mediba to Dibon, and all the sites of Sihon, king of the Amorites, cities, sorry, not sites, all the cities of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon to the border of the children of Ammon and Gilead, 
and the border of the Geshurites and Maccathites and all Mount Hermon and all Bashan to Salica and the, all the kingdom of Og and Bashan who reigned in Ashtaroth and in Edrai who was left of the remnant of the Rephaim for Moses attacked these and drove them out. Nevertheless, the children of Israel didn't drive out the Geshurites nor the Maccathites, but Geshur and Maccath live within Israel to this day. Only he gave no inheritance to the tribe of Levi. The offerings of Yahweh, the God of Israel, made by fire are his inheritance as he spoke to him. Moses gave to the tribe of the children of Reuben according to their families. Their border was from Aroer, which is in, or that is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon, and the city that is in the middle of the valley and all the plain by Mediba, Heshbon, and all the sit, all its cities that are in the plain, Dibon, Bamoth, Baal, Beth, Baal, Meon, Jahaz, Kedemoth, Mephath, Kiriathame, Sibma, Zareth, Shahar, in the mount of the valley, Beth, Peor, the slopes of Pisgah, Beth, Jeshemoth, all the cities of the plain, on all the kingdoms of uh, of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses struck with the chiefs of Midian, Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, the princes of Sihon, who lived in the land. The children of Israel also killed Balaam, the son of Beor, the soothsayer, with the sword among the rest of their slain. The borders of the children of Reuben was the bank of the Jordan. This was their this was the inheritance of the children of Reuben according to their families, the cities, and its villages. Moses gave to the tribe of Gad, to the children of Gad, according to their families. Their border was Jazer and all the cities of Gilead, and half the land of the children of Arma, Ammon to Aror, that is near Rabbah, and from Heshbon to Ramoth Mizpah and to Betanim, and from Mahanaim to the border of Deber, and in the valley Beth Haram, Beth Nimrah, Succoth, and Zaphon, the rest of the kingdom of Sihon, king of Heshbon, the Jordan's bank to the uttermost part of the sea of Chinnereth, beyond the Jordan eastward. This is the inheritance of the children of Gad, according to their families, the cities and its villages. Moses gave an inheritance to the half-tribe of Manasseh. It was for the half-tribe of the children of Manasseh, according to their families. Their border was from Mehanaim, all Bashan, all the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, and all the villages of Jair, which are in Bashan, 60 cities. Half Gilead, Ashtoreth, and Edri, the cities of the kingdom of Og and Bashan, were for the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, even for the half of the children of Machir, according to their families. These are the inheritances of which Moses distributed in the plains of Moab, beyond the Jordan at Jericho, eastward. But Moses gave no inheritance to the tribe of Levi. Yahweh, the God of Israel, is their inheritance, as he spoke to them. <sighs> Here we go. Yeah, man, these names are really killing me. They are just killing me. Joshua 14. All right. All right, here we go. These are the inheritances which the children of Israel took in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed to them by the lot of their inheritance, as Yahweh commanded by Moses, for the nine tribes and for the half-tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of the two tribes and the half-tribe beyond the Jordan, but to the Levites he gave no inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. They gave no portion to the Levites in the land except cities to dwell in with their pasture lands, for their livestock and their property. The children of Israel did as Yahweh commanded Moses, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came near to Joshua in Gilgal. Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the thing that Yahweh spoke to Moses, the man of God concerning me and concerning you in Kadesh Barnea? I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of Yahweh, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed Yahweh, my God. Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where you walk shall be an inheritance to you and to your children forever, because you have wholly followed Yahweh, my God. Man, it is difficult. Sorry. We'll get back to what was Caleb was talking about, but this, my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. And yet he, so him and Joshua, right, were the only ones that actually came over. Everybody else died. And he was 40, 40 when he was rolling out there. But anyways, I have wholly followed Yahweh, my God. It is difficult, very challenging to wholly follow Yahweh, your God, in the midst of Everyone else doing something different. And this is, this, is, this is among the people of God. This is among the chosen people of God. This is among the children of Israel here. It's not like he was isolated in the midst of, uh, you know, whatever. 
other other groups, other tribes, he was in the midst of his own people, and it was really challenging him for, for him to do what's right. Now behold, Caleb continues here in verse 10, Yahweh has kept me alive as he spoke these 45 years from the time that Yahweh spoke this word to Moses while Israel walked in the wilderness. Now behold, I am 85 years old today. As yet, I am as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this hill country of which Yahweh spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and great and fortified cities. It may be that Yahweh will be with me, and I shall drive them out, as Yahweh said. Joshua blessed him, and he gave Hebron to Caleb the son of Jephunneh for an inheritance. Therefore, Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he followed Yahweh, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Now, the name of Hebron before was Kiriath Arba, after the greatest man among the Anakim. Then the land had rest from war. Joshua 15, and I think we're going to, yeah, verse 9 here. The lot for the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families, was to the border of Edom even to the wilderness of Zin southward at the uttermost part of the south. Their south border was from the uttermost part of the salt sea, from the bay that looked southward, and it went out toward southward of the ascent of Akrabim, and passed along to Zin, and went up by the south of Kadesh Barnea, and passed along by Hezron, went up to Adar, and turned toward Karka, and it passed along to Asmon, went out at the brook of Egypt, and the border ended at the sea. This shall be your south border. The east border was the salt sea, even to the end of the Jordan. The border of the north quarter was from the bay of the sea at the high, at the end of the Jordan. The border went up to Beth Hogla and passed along by the north of Beth Arabah. And the border went up to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. The, the border went up to Deber from the valley of Akor. And so northward, looking toward Gilgal, that faces the ascent of Adumim, which is on the south side of the river. The border passed along to the waters of En Shemesh and ended at En Rogel. The border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom to the side of the Jebusite, also called Jerusalem, southward. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lies before the valley of Hinnom, westward, which is at the farthest part of the valley of Rephaim, northward. The border extended from the top of the mountain to the spring of the waters of Nephtoah, and went out to the cities of Mount Ephron, and the border extended to Bela, also called called Kiriath-Jerim. So that's where we're supposed to stop, but that doesn't seem quite right. I'm going to double-check this real list. Oh, 1519. That makes sense. Not 159. 1519. There we go. We'll keep going here. This is verse 10. And the border turned da- turned about from Bela westward to Mount Sire and passed along to the side of Mount Jerim, also called Chesalon, on the north, and went down to Beth Shemesh and passed along by Timnah. And the border went out to the side of Ekron northward, and the border extended to Shikaron and passed along to Mount Bela and went out to Jabneel, and the goings out of the border were at the sea. The west border was to the shore of the great sea. This is the border of the children of Israel children of Judah, sorry, according to their families. He gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, a portion among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of Yahweh to Joshua. Even Kiriath Arba, named after the father of Anak, also called Hebron. Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak, Shashai and Ahiman and Talmai, the children of Anak. He went up against the inhabitants of Debir. Now the name of Debir before was Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said, he who strikes Kiriath Sefer and takes it, to him I will give Ek, Aksa, my daughter, his wife, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it. And he gave him Akash, Aksa, his daughter, as wife. When she came, she had him ask her father for a field. She got off her donkey and Caleb said, what do you want? She said, give me a blessing because you have set me in the land of the south. Give me also springs of water. So he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. So a wise, wise woman. I don't, I mean. We don't hear much about the things that are going on, but here, here we do hear a little bit. It's interesting that Caleb, you know, he was 85, like he, he was saying he was 85 and he said his strength was the same. Now that is unusual for your strength to be the same at 85 as, as it is at 40, but I guess so be it. Um, 
I, that certainly <laughs> supernaturally, I don't know, but he trusted God and God sustained him and God did these things and God blessed him. And he looked at God and he said, it may be that God does this. Oh, and sometimes <sighs> we frequently pray about things and ask for things. And then when circumstances happen and it's not exactly the same way that we asked for, or maybe we weren't even clear in what we were praying about, but God brings certain things to pass. You sometimes you're left wondering, Oh, and then you have to remember, Oh yeah, I think I've already prayed about this. I think I've already prayed about this new job, this, uh, stressed, strenuous relationship. I think I've already prayed about these things. I've brought them to the Lord and here we are. And here we are. It's very, very challenging. Um, very challenging sometime, sometimes to hear um, that, you know, the, the, the answer is, I guess, a no. A no from God. Sometimes that's the case, though. All right. We are going to pray today for the Outreach Community Center. The Outreach Community Center ministry. What is it that they do? Well, it's a multi-purpose, multi-purpose, multi-purpose neighborhood resource center serving residents in Southeast Carroll Stream, Illinois, since 1986. The goal is to help neighborhood residents work together to build a stronger community. Staff are professionally trained in education and human services, sharing a common commitment to minister to each person's physical, social, and spiritual needs. Services are available without preference to all people and where fees apply based on one's ability to pay. All right, this outreach community. Oh, yeah, that's uh, they've got youth development. They've got college opportunity programs. They've got family sta stabilization services, older adult programs, and uh, yeah, all kinds of counseling and things that go along uh, with that. We're also going to pray. And we are going to pray for MJ and J today. Uh, these are folks known to me. Uh, I coach MJ and I coach, or and J uh, is mama. We are going to pray for both of them today as well. So coach them in uh, track. Uh, so let's pray for the Outreach Community Center. We're going to pray for MJ. We're going to pray for Jay. And you can send me your um, prayer requests, notmanynoble at gmail.com. And what else we got? Oh, yeah. If you're driving, keep your eyes up and on the road. If you are not, you can close your eyes, no problem. And send me, send me your prayer requests. Let us pray. Thank you, Father for your word. Thank you that you've given it to us. Thank you that you have preserved it for us by supernatural means in the same way that you gave uh, Caleb this strength to the end of his life. I pray that you would, or I, we thank you that you have preserved your word and the strength and the power of it even unto, uh, even unto now. You've promised that your word will never pass away. And we pray that this would be fulfilled among us that your word would be, as you have promised, living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and that it would cut through bone and marrow and that it would deal with us and deal with those around us and that you would use it to refine us and to cut us and to make us more like Christ. And we lift up to you many of the challenges and the problems that we're facing. We've got marriage relationships that are strained and stressed. Uh, we have familial relationships that are crumbling and broken and that we desire to see healed. We desire to see restoration. We desire to see uh, some passion and some zeal, some faithfulness from those around us. And we desire to be more faithful and more responsible. And we have job concerns. We have financial concerns where we don't, don't make enough money or we, we, and we don't know what to do 
and how to close the gap and, and how to, um, how to uh, increase our income or, or lower our expenses. We feel trapped. We feel um, claustrophobic and oppressed by uh, bills and debts and taxes and all, all manner of things, Lord, that we, we lift up to you and, and pray that you would please take these burdens away guide us and direct us. Some of us even make have made too much money and made foolish decisions with them. And we lift up those uh, to you as well. Um, those who have, you know, chosen, chosen f- foolish things or made bad decisions and, and we're living with the repercussions of them. Pray that you would please give us grace and that you would please take these burdens away in your time. But Lord, relieve us, we pray. Uh, restore us, re- return us to God. Give us repentance uh, for our sins. Give us repentance and, and turning from uh, our sinful behaviors and the little pet sins that we're raising up inside our hearts and that you would please glorify yourself. Also, we lift up the Outreach Community Center in Carroll Stream, Illinois to you, uh, the center and both its staff as they seek to serve vulnerable children, teens, and families, that you would bless them with the ability to meet physical needs, spiritual needs, mental needs, and that you would make room for the gospel, and that you would send it forth in a powerful way, and that those who experience this love and this care, that they would be receptive to it, and that they would also be responsive to the gospel when they hear it. Use it to save sinners and draw them unto yourself. Lift up MJ and J to you and pray that you would please soften their hearts towards the uh, coaching, towards the leadership, towards the admonitions that are coming their way. We pray for a turnaround in MJ's life and that uh, he, instead of being known by uh, foolishness and uh, constant disruption and frivolity in his activities, um, both at school and in his athletics, that instead we would see focus, determination, purpose, principle, um, self-control, um, and that he would be, that you would bless, bless his labors, bless his teacher's labors, bless his coach's labors. Give us grace to make inroads into his heart and into his mind and to convince him that we have his best interest in mind. And then also pray for his mama to come alongside and to uh, see that these people in his life care for him greatly and want what's best for him and are willing to work and that that would be embraced and that um, she would assist in holding him accountable uh, to the standards that have been communicated and that you would be glorified throughout all this, that we would have reason to look back and say, but God, there was no way, there was no way through these challenging relationships and through these challenging um, work environments and school environments and athletic environments, but God, but God had mercy on us, but God blessed us, but God drew near to us, but God, that is my prayer. And that is our prayer today, that in all these things in our life, we would say, but Yahweh God said and did this, that you did this. Hoist us up as uh, champions of your grace and mercy, flags of your grace and mercy for all to see. And thank you for recounting or for keeping and, and the, the story of Caleb and his resilience and his trust. And I pray that we would, in the same way, be learn from learn from his experience that we trust you trust you in the midst of all these things anything that's going on we trust you they said it be may it be said of us that we trust yahweh our god completely and with our whole heart in jesus name amen thank you thank you for staying with me today um prayer uh email not many noble at gmail.com show notes at not many noble and i'll catch you tomorrow